Okay, moving on to lesson number nine. Now, if you like pointers, especially the ADF, that's Automatic Direction Finder, you're gonna love this lesson. Some, however, might call this lesson a special little torture the FAA designed just to keep us all humble. In any event, you're gonna learn how to follow and understand all the needles. Fortunately, GPS navigation is much easier to understand, and the FAA lets you fly with one of those. Right now, let's join our instructor in the classroom and get started. Hi, I'm Josh Pruzik for ASA. As a commercial pilot, you'll probably find yourself flying a lot more cross countries than you ever have before, perhaps even to transport passengers or even haul packages. And a big part of cross country flying, as you already know, is navigation. Whether you go VFR or IFR, you'll need to be savvy navigating in both environments to make the most of your commercial certificate. In this lesson, we'll talk about cross-country flight planning using your E6B flight computer. We'll also explore some navigation tools such as VOR and ADF. And finally, we'll look at some navigation instruments in the cockpit such as the HSI. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've been flying for any length of time, you've probably got one of these tucked away someplace. It's an E6B flight computer. We're going to get started by looking at some useful calculations using your trusty E6B. Now this should be a familiar tool to you from your private pilot days, and if it isn't, well, then it's time to brush up. We're going to start by reviewing some basic operations of the E6B and then work a few problems from the FAA knowledge exam. The face of the E6B is the computer side. The outer circle of numbers is distance traveled in nautical or statute miles. We'll be doing our example using nautical miles since that's what the FAA uses. Now, the outer circle of numbers can also be used for calculating fuel consumption. The numbers are small, notice they're all two digit numbers. These numbers can be multiplied by 10, 100, or even 1,000. The inner circle of numbers is used for minutes. Now the numbers below that are minutes calculated into hours as we see right here. For example, 70 minutes is one hour and 10 minutes. Now the arrow for a pointer is used to show your speed or your fuel burn in gallons per hour. Speed or fuel flow is nothing more than a ratio of the number on the outer scale to the number on the inner scale. For example, rotate the dial so the speed arrow is under the 10. Now this 10 represents a distance of 100 nautical miles at a rate of 60 minutes. Now let's say we travel the distance of 120 nautical miles. How long would it take us traveling at that rate? Well, we simply look along the outer scale until we find 12. Now the 12 can represent 1.2 or 12 or 120 or even 1200. For this example, we need 120 nautical miles. Then by checking the inner scale, we can see that it would take us approximately 72 minutes. All we're really doing here is setting up ratios. Now how do you know the correct answer is 72 minutes and not 7.2 minutes or 720 minutes? Well, common sense plays a role in this. If you're traveling at a speed of 100 knots for 120 miles, it's sure going to take you a lot longer than 7.2 minutes, and it's going to take a lot less time than 720 minutes. You might ask yourself after the end of each question if the answer makes sense. If you come up with an answer that doesn't quite make sense, you probably made a mistake somewhere. As you get more familiar with your computer, in practice, the answers will come more naturally.